Okay, preview is running. And now I'm gonna go go live. I should be live. I should be live. I don't know, guys. I should be live. You might be watching a commercial right now for all I know. Oh, I'm gonna give Daniel the switcher because uh, you probably, I don't think it's gonna show up. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on? Uh, we're totally testing this out, so I figured let's try it one more time. I think we worked out one of the glitches, which we had the first time. If you don't know who I am, Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on our social media. And this is Sheila. We always shoot with, I mean, on my channel, we always shoot with Sheila. I'm not rich like Daniel Norton to keep getting all these models, but, you know, Sheila's a good model. All right, so I thought I'd do a really quick demo. He did three-point lighting, showed you some variations, including lighting the background if you have a great paper. But you can actually use your own modifiers as a background as well. You've seen me use them on my uh, Instagram using the grids as background and all sorts of stuff like that. However, maybe I just want a clean white background. And if, yes, this is going to be a tight shot, but if you're on location or you're doing like corporate headshots and you have gray paper and they go, hey, we'd like to see something with a white background, instead of worrying about having a lighter background, you can actually use your own softbox as a background. If you, this is a standard two by three, this is as standard as it gets. And as long as you can get someone in there, as long as you understand power ratios, you can make a, a white background fairly easy. The key to this is to make sure that the power is just at the right point so it doesn't blow around your subject or cause flare. So it's a, it's a few things. It's gonna be distance to the subject and power of your strobe. But the first thing you have to do is get the exposure for your model. So let, this is why it's a good option when you're shooting on location because you can get whatever shots with Sheila how she is and then you can throw the soft box back there because once you get the exposure for her, it's just a matter of dialing in that backlight, if that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please ask me in the chat. This one's thrown together a little bit. Right away, I'm gonna give Sheila a little bit of a distance from the background because I'm gonna be making my own background. I don't even care about that gray paper, but well, let's get an exposure on her. So, for my key light, because Daniel already had it sitting around, <laughs> is gonna be this B1X with a Pro Photo B1X, I should say, because Daniel gets a nickel every time I say that. Uh, <laughs> oh, Vanessa's in the chat. Now we know it's a party. All right. So I'm gonna set this to channel three, group A, and I'm gonna close this softbox. It has a one by three strip light on it, and you guys usually see me use a one by 1 1.3 square box, but this is similar. So what I'm gonna do is hang this thing so that we get a nice contrasty-ish contrasty light on her. And I'm borrowing Daniel's camera for right now. I'm gonna put this out. And remember, arm goes over the tall leg so that it's stable. You don't put it in between the legs. And, oh, that was a joke right there, right? There's a joke somewhere in there. And I'm gonna put a sandbag on the tall leg so that it's stable. Remember, if the sandbag doesn't swing like this, if it's touching the ground, it's not really holding the stand because the floor is what's holding that weight, not the stand. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put this in a right angle position and I'm gonna turn it so that my light is actually horizontal and I'm gonna kick it down. So what this is gonna do is give me like a really stern drop shadow to really sculpt her out with shadows on her face because I'm gonna do a white background to her. I want some definition to her on the front while we have a clean commercial white background. Okay, and I feel like I've done the white background 8,000 times, but we're gonna keep doing it. So deal with it, kids, I don't care. Man, is that your nose? I'm hearing like, Hearing all this whistling going on, it's got to be Daniel's nose. He's breathing through it. It is. It's your nose. You just you just laughed, and I heard it different. Okay, let me just take a look at the modeling light. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab Ni um, Daniel's Nikon Z6. We're gonna shoot. We're gonna start at around f8. But before I do that, what's the first thing we got to do? We need to check if the ambient light's affecting this shot. So I'm just gonna turn the lights off. And I'm gonna take a shot at F8, ISO 100 at a one sixtieth of a second. And because, do you have live settings set on? Because it's already black. Yeah, you already have. Yeah. So he has the live view and the EVF on, which means I'm seeing black, which means odds are I'm not gonna have an exposure, but I'm gonna turn that off. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm shooting theoretical light. I'm not really shooting the light in the space, therefore I don't need a live EVF. I just need to see what I'm doing because I'm creating the light that I'm capturing. I'm not using the light that's in here. 
Okay, so let's take a look. I'm gonna zoom in here, I'm gonna take a look at her. And we're gonna take a shot and let's take a look at the tether. And we're black, black as black can be. And you guys know if you've been watching enough of my demos that this isn't just black. This is your ex uh, exposure of your shadows. So if I pull this, we're about two and a third, two and a half stops till we see Sheila. That means that my shadows are going to be two and a half stops away from my highlight. This gives me important information if I wanna use a fill light or anything like that. I know that if I'm only using this light as, a, as my light source to capture, then that means anything that falls off is that, that's as dark as it'll get. It's not just about eliminating the space, it's about knowing your shadow exposure. I know, blah, 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 right? Cool. Let's turn this on. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So it, with, if you guys didn't know with the Nikon Z series, if you have a TTL trigger activated, it will cancel your live view so you don't have to worry about having a black EVF when you're looking at it. It knows you're shooting with a flash, which is pretty cool, I think. I don't know, Dan's in like, Dan's 15 seconds behind me right now. So we're dealing with that, yeah, okay. Let's take a look at what she looks like with TTL. I'm gonna lock it in. Oh, that light, stuck. That light fired, hold on. I gotta turn off head B because Dan kept it on by accident. Let's do that again. Whoa, why is that light firing, man? Oh, it's in C, that's why. Yeah, it's good. always a good demo. C, turn it off. Let's take a look at that again. Third time's a charm, right? Okay, now let's take a look at her. So this is a good exposure. We're looking at detail everywhere on her, and you can see how sculpted she is. I think it's a little bit under for what I want to do, but I'm kind of okay with that because I know what I'm about to do is throw more light into the situation. So before I adjust the exposure on my key, I'm going to see what happens when I put in the background light because some of that light will affect the shot if it's too close to my, if it's, if it's close enough to Sheila. So let's switch the trigger into manual, lock in this exposure. I'm okay with it. I'm gonna go into my C group now and that's what this light's gonna be. So now I'm gonna put this light, let's, let's kick this sandbag full of rocks ugh, away. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this right behind her. So now you're playing a couple of games with distance here. One, you want the distance to be close enough to that it's not too small and she fits inside this box to give us that white background. Two, you don't want it to be too close or too far because that will actually affect how the light acts as it's rushing towards your lens. With light towards your lens, all sorts of things can happen, right? So let's get this really dialed in. How's the chat? They hate you. They hate me? Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to make sure she's square. All right. That looks okay to me. And let's take a shot with just, well, what I need to do is, I'm looking at this light and it's at 4.3. So I'm gonna turn on this head C, which is that backlight. And I'm gonna turn off my A head, which is lighting Sheila. And I'm doing that because I wanna know what the exposure of that light C, hold on. Okay, cool. So now this light is firing, cool. Well, what I wanna do is take this light meter and you can do this by trial and error, but I want to show you properly how to do it. Is I'm going to take this light. Ugh. Why is there so many tethers? Everything you have has a tether on it. Everything you have has a tether on it. It's killing me. I'm borrowing all of Daniel's gear. So I'm going to set this to the same exposure as this light. This is about a foot and a half from her face. This is about a foot and a half from, from the back of her head. What I want to get is F8 here, which is what I have in the camera. We just did that. Now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna take a light meter reading of the back of her head, and it's F5.0. That is not even gonna get me where I need to be to have a white background. What I need this to be is either F8 or about a half stop above that. So what I'm gonna go and do is go into my C light, which is this. I'm gonna add it one, two, two stops. And now I'm at F10. So that's a little bit brighter of, a, of an exposure than what's happening in the front. This might still be too much light, but because I have tenths of a stop on this, I'm gonna actually lower it three, I'm gonna lower it uh, half a stop. Now let's take a shot with just the backlight and let's see if I get a white background. 
So that looks pretty white to me. And, as I, and you see how she has a little bit of light on her? What's actually happening here is the key light is this one by three. Well, light off of this two by three is reflecting off of the strip light because it's actually wider than Sheila. So you're getting light flying past her, hitting this and acting as a fill light, which is pretty convenient actually. So let's put these lights together. But if you notice, no flare. All right, am I on the screen? Do, I, do you have me on the screen? You'll be on the screen, yes. You will be. No, no, not me, the, the screen screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so see how, there's, see how there's no flare happening? That means that we just ratioed this light to not affect the front of the camera at all. But we are getting the reflection of the light from behind her here onto the softbox in front of her here. And that's why you're seeing this fill happen and not a total silhouette. So let's put these lights together, A, head on, do a quick test and take a shot. Let's see what we get. Boom, white background, super clean with just our light sources. And yeah, we're gonna get this crazy halo around her, which is nice. I like that stuff. It's, so what you basically have here is four, uh, uh, two lights acting as a four light, maybe even a six light setup. And what I mean by that is usually to get a white background with rim lights, you would have two lights on the background cross, crossing each other to make an even white background. Then you might even put two rim lights on either side of her to get those cheek highlights. And then you would have your key lights. So that's four lights right there. And you, you could put some sort of fill in there or whatever. But right here, we have two lights acting like a key, a fill, a background, and two rims. Are you not entertained? Are there any questions on this? Anything? Yeah, so Patty said, uh, so really the backlight should be equal to the key? You can have the backlight equal to the key, but what you might see is that it's not going to be uh, completely white depending on what your distance is. Because sometimes you might need this light to back up a little bit more to cover shoulders, and therefore you might get less of an exposure, even if it's saying that it's at uh, the, same, this, the same exposure as the front. What I typically do is go at least a half to one stop over from my key light to get a, a definite white background there. Uh, what you don't want is flare. You don't want underexposure. So let's do that. Let's underexpose the backlight. Let's go to C. Let's drop it down two stops. Let's see what happens. And you can see the top starts becoming a little gray. You can even see right here texture of the softbox. Can you guys see that on the screen? See how there's like a fall off? When you guys look at the difference in these two images, see how one looks correct on the left, which is where we were? And then on the right, all we did was take light out of that. We took some power out of that light and we're losing the fill and we're losing our stark white. We have this weird gradation to it. You might like that look, but if you're trying to get that white commercial look, you're going to have to go at least even in exposure or a little bit greater. So let's go to back to, let's, let's blow it out just so you guys have an idea of what it looks like. So I'm adding five stops. That means I'm actually up three because I took out two, but let's do it. So it's three stops greater than my key light now. And you see how we get this foggy fade, which is nice if you want to have some ethereal, angel-y looking thing for a character, but most of the time, this will change someone's skin tone. It could change their uh, clothing. You change all sorts of things about what's going on in there, or even the color saturation of makeup could change here. You want to make sure that that light is where we had it, which was, I'm going to drop it down back three stops and we'll have it right back where we wanted it. And you can see right here, boom, we're right back where we wanted it. We have a clean white, no fall off, and I don't see any texture of the soft box because it's properly exposed. Okay, guys? Uh, and if I wanted to, I could play with the, the uh, key light and I could give it like another stop. And then you'll see that we can kind of bring it up a little bit. Boom, right there, clean. Super, super clean. It's on exposure because I'm seeing every texture in those highlights. Oh, your, your, your mouse pad goes the other way, or track pad goes the other way. Yeah, you see that? So we're definitely on exposure here. Whew. All right, I think, so just, just for fun, just for fun, let's uh, throw a black board on one side. I'm gonna show you guys how to make that, that definition we did in a past demo really quick. Are there any questions in the chat? Nothing? Uh, no, they're discussing what you just said. Okay. Are we digging this? Are we all right with it? Oh, they, they, they love it. 
They love it. All right, because I have no idea what I'm doing today. I just was like, let's do a demo, Dan. And he's like, yeah, let's do a demo. Oh, actually, yeah, West, West, West Coast Vivi, uh, she's asking the, the light coming from the back doesn't uh, hurt the lens. The, the light from the back could cause flare and could cause fogging or what we call blowback. And that's totally controllable by the power of the light. If this wasn't a soft box, yeah, we would get a, the harder the light source, the more of a ripping flare you'd get. But because they're using an even uh, soft box, that this whole panel should be even, uh, you won't get that kind of phenomenon happening. But yeah, it is, it is a risk. But as long as we understand our power ratios, we shouldn't have a problem. So let's try what, let's see what happens when I put black on either side. We did this in, a, in, a, in another demo uh, recently, right guys? So I'm gonna put black on either side of her and that's gonna be called what? Negative fill, which is the guy that everyone hates in the office, you know? I'm gonna use, uh, actually, I can use this. This is a pretty garbage stand though. I hate this light stand, Dan. This is the worst stand ever. It's apparently, apparently it's not Brett's. It's, it's Rod's. Yeah, it's rods. Rod. Oh, rod. All right. So I'm, what I'm doing is putting foam core, which I think I'm, this is a, together these boards cost five bucks. You could use black duvetine, black canvas, V-flats, black construction paper. I used to keep a stack of that around in my old, um, in my old studio. Oh, now I know I can't use this because it doesn't stay, right? Oh, no, it does. All right, let's see if this changes anything, guys. I'm gonna walk this in a little tighter. Now, negative fill is super subtle, but it should actually change a couple things. Well, just one thing, really, but let's take a look. I got her in a little house. I'm doing this just for fun right now. This isn't like practical or anything. Let's take a look. Yeah, and you get a little bit more definition on her jawline here. And I could keep playing games with this. I could take that light in the background and push it back a little more. Now it's going to be harder for me to fill the back of her with the white of the softbox. But if I stretch my lens out, the longer the focal length, the bigger that background becomes to her shoulders, right? From my perspective. Oh no, we're going to see the softbox totally. Well, let's see. What? Yeah, it's just a 70 millimeter. But you see how we just got deeper shadows here? So when you look at left to right, it's subtle, but it's there. You guys see the difference? Right over, even in her lips, you can see, I'm gonna pull this over here, I'm gonna pull this over here. You see the difference? There's deeper shadows in the mouth, deeper shadows underneath the chin, and just a touch deeper here, and we lose that highlight. See the highlight's gone? On the, t on the side of the cheekbone. Boom. So it's a totally different feel. Now because we move the light back, the fill light goes down on, uh, from this to this. You see how this has a little bit of a gray tone to it? Okay, so I'm gonna go into my A light, A, and I'm gonna give it seven tenths more of a stop. It's so weird using a 70 millimeter after having that 120 on my camera forever. Let's take a look. There you go. So now we have a clean white without the white highlight halo on either side. You see that? And that's because we have negative fill and we move the light away. Does that make sense to everybody? It's subtle stuff, but it's these subtle things that make all the difference to my style versus Dan versus yours is all these little subtle things are Think of it kind of like grammar in a sentence or demeanor when you're saying something. Same thing with a, with a photo. Subtle difference is what really polishes up your sentence if you want it to convey a certain tone. All right. So Mike's asking, and this is totally different, Mike's asking if he's using a white background and trying to get it black. He's tried blocking with the grid. I feel my room is too small to get it to work with a large light source. Do you recommend a small? Yeah, uh, so what's basically happened, so the question was is if I'm, try if, in a white if I'm using a white background in a small room and I'm trying to get it black, what am I doing wrong not to get it black? Well, one, you have inverse square, right? Get the light closer to your subject, farther from that back wall because you don't want light to, to expose that back wall. So think of it this way. Uh, let me move all this junk out of the way first of all. So let's say this is your setup, right? If over here is F8, 
if this is the only light source and the wall is over here, then this means the light over here is probably about 6.3. It'll show up. But if I'm back here, every time I, I double the distance, I increase a stop. So here might be 5, 6, F4, 2, 8, 1, 4. You see what happens there? That's inverse square. Is the, 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 fast, the closer a light is to our subject, the faster it falls off. And that's what you want because you want it to fall off to black on the far wall. The other thing you might be having a problem with is if the ceiling is too short, the light will actually reflect off that ceiling and bathe the entire room. When we do a fill light on location, we boost the light into the ceiling. I think we do this like every time. We boost into a corner into the ceiling just to wash light down. And that's basically the same thing that's happening when your one light source might be in a small space reflecting off of a ceiling. What I would recommend is flag this key light, get it closer to your subject, get them as far off of that back wall as possible and see where you get with that. But flagging the light might actually help. A grid will definitely help, although that will affect your subject. If you're trying to get a black background on a white wall, you're gonna be causing so many obstacles and limitations for yourself that you're gonna be sacrificing a better shot probably. You might be sacrificing better uh, shadow patterns on your model. So think about if that's even the right way to do it. Go about it. Easiest solution, you wanna hear the craziest hack in the world? Go get yourself a piece of cheap black canvas or black velvet and just tape it to the wall. Or get a roll of black paper, which I think um, a 40, not a 40, it's not, not the 53, what's the, no 53. A 53 inch roll is like 40 bucks, not even. Tape it to the wall and roll it down backwards. Don't look at a way to hang up the roll. Tape the end of the paper and roll it down backwards if you don't want to suspend it. Easy hack. Uh, it's not even a hack. That's how you set it up. If you want a black background, use a black background, okay? You can make things happen on the fly, but why should you fight yourself and sacrifice what you're trying to do for the subject? So I think because you move the light back and then add the negative fill, the West Coast VV is asking, so negative fill gives more definition, which is true, but and gets rid of the halo. That's not what it's No, no. So the, if, okay, so the question is, did the negative fill also get rid of the halo? The, the, what really happened there is semi. So this is physically blocking light, not just, not just eating up the reflection, but the distance pushing that light farther back is what changed the light. Because when it was closer, the spread is different. So now that it's farther away, it's spreading wider and doesn't have a chance to wrap, wrap as we call it, around her to give those halos. It's actually, the distance of the light that's more affecting the fact that we don't have halos. The negative fill is just helping it along. And a lot of times you'll take these negative fill, where did I put the card? Okay. You'll take the negative fill and you'll actually pitch it one way or another to block that light. So when you're doing a traditional white background, you'll light the background separately and then usually put a flag by those lights so that they don't bleed into the shot itself, but only illuminate that back wall as its own zone. Okay, I don't know if that makes any sense. That sounds right, right? That sounded smart, right, Dan? Yeah, that sounded good. Yeah, it sounded good, right? Yeah, it sounded good. What did I do with that board? Oh, that's what I do with that board. It's sitting over here. Yeah, so if, you're, if I were to put a light here to light the background, light into that corner, another light into this corner, let them cross each other. You don't want to like bang it straight forward. And then what I would do is I'd put a card or a V-flat to block this light physically so that while it's spreading, it's not hitting the back of my model. It's just affecting the wall. And that would be its own exposure. Any other questions, guys? This is a quick one. We're just trying to figure this setup out for the future demos. Do you recommend a 3 by 2 softbox over a 3 foot octa? Depends on what you're using it for, right? Uh, a two by three is super like the universal box, but a three foot octa will get you a different type of spread. So when you use, when I, if you use a two foot by three foot box like this, the octa would be out to here. So let's say I wanted more light to brush past my model to then use a reflector. I'd have more ability to, to throw fill back in with a reflector using an octa than I would the two by three. But then there's also, do you want that? Because sometimes you might want a narrower type of light. If you don't want that with a two by three, you can easily do this. And guess what? Now I have more residual light flying past my model, but it's not covering this way. So you have to make a decision of what you're trying to shoot. It's not that one's better than another. Otherwise, there would be no point to one existing over another. They're all different tools for different reasons. So if I was sh shooting more of a torso, this probably wouldn't be my go-to. And in fact, if I had to say what was more, you, um, 
versatile. I'd probably say a three foot octa. I think Daniel actually did a whole video on why that's his favorite, right? Didn't you do that? The three foot octa is your favorite or something? Yeah. So you guys can check that on Daniel's channel where we just were live. We probably should have gone live on my channel first to get all the problems out, then done a clean demo on yours. <laughs> it, it's whatever. Sorry, guys. Uh, any other questions before we get out of here? Oh boy. Yeah, so um, if you're looking for a light meter to really get your setups dialed in, first of all, can we just say that this is a perfect example as to why a light meter is a great tool and just eyeballing it's a pain. Uh, not to mention, if this was an actual client and they were sitting there watching me take four shots, five shots, six shots, so I got a white background the way it works. Here, you dial it in with whomever and then you just have people walk in and do the, do the portraits. Boom, 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 boom. And I mean, what's more versatile than using the light models you already have, modifiers you already have, as also your background piece. And I could easily just take that box away. Actually, let's take a shot without the background on at all. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. I'm probably gonna get a pretty black background. Let's see what this looks like. Actually, let's move this. I'll make it, whoa, I hate this stand. Oh, can we just put, can we just put it out the, can we just put it out the pasture? Someone will die using that stand if I give it away. So let's take a look at what this background looks like. Black, black as black can be. Well, not black as black. That's, that's like thunder gray. It's thunder gray. It's like, hey, and that's, that's fashion gray. But look where we were, guys. And that's with the same, I didn't touch that, that light. This light stayed constant the entire time. All I did was put in a soft box that we dialed in. So let's say this was the setup. All I would have to do to that, that light is swing it out of the way and then swing it in the way when I needed it. And I'm pretty good. All right. Okay, so the other question is Mike Way is asking about, can you explain feathered light, what it does? Can I explain what feathered light does? So, yeah. Yeah, that's, all right. So we'll go with this setup. I guess we'll use the two by three. Not with this setup again. No, well, not this. There's like, I mean, I could if I, mm. okay. I don't want to fight it. Let's just do uh, let's just do something else. All right. I don't want to keep making this like a universal demo. So this is going to be like the last setup we do. Okay. Because <laughs> let's get this out of here. What? He bought a grid for a beauty dish, but he's getting grid, uh, excessive light spillage. It's, it's making a grid like pattern. Oh. What, what grid did you buy? Wait a second. You know what? Okay. So Gary is saying he's using a grid on a on a beauty dish but he's getting a grid-like pattern everywhere. Usually when that happens is you're not using it correctly because uh, you'll get a grid-like pattern if there's no diffuser in the middle. Yeah. If there's no deflector, like, uh, I don't know, there's a million things they call beauty dishes and they aren't. So if there's no deflector panel in there and if there's no diffuser panel, if it's actually an octa box, because most of the time they'll call it a beauty, oh, I took it, oh, I left it at the other studio. We, there's a, like, let's take the, the Westcott Rapid Box. If you take, the beauty dish and just build it without the deflector plate, it's just an octa. And if that's the case, without having the diffuser there and you put the grid on there, you'll get a grid pattern projected through the light. So that's probably your problem. And I guarantee you that's what you bought, Gary, because I know who you are. So I know. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So this is direct, direct light to her, right? We're doing like the classic 45, no one likes to do this light. This is what they tell you to do right off the bat. Is a 45-45, right? Yay. Let's take a look at what the difference is. I don't know which light this is, actually. Oh, this is C. Turn the head on. Is A still on? Yep, A is still on. Now I'm all over the place, guys. This is because of you. All right, so I'll put TTL on. And I'll, oh, I'm just going to shoot this horizontally so we know the difference in these shots. So this is like directly on her, right? Cool. So let's spin this box and feather it away, right? So this is using most of the light in front of her, which is feathering past her, right? So instead of having the light slam into her, we're having the spread of light wash across her, which is usually better, one, because you have softer shadow patterns, and two, you have all this extra light to, if I wanted to, use a fill. 
Let's take a look. This is feathering away. Oh, that whole like thing that they give you in the camera, the message where it's like, take spoon at the lens or I can't use it is so strange to me. You guys see the difference in the shadow pattern just from feathering past? Do you guys see that? How it's not a hard highlight here and a sharp shadow, but now we have an even. Now, if I wanted to, whoops, Jesus. If I wanted to, yeah, I know. I'm just, I can't stand all these things, man. Everything has a tether on it. What do you think, it's gonna wash away in a tide? What are you doing, man? <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do is, now I have all this light flying past her. Well, I also happen to have this. You guys know what this is, right? Well, if I just use this. Oh, Jesus. What? Did you say impact? Yep. See how I have all that light to fly back in? So this is, here we go. This is direct light, feathered light, feathered light with a fill. You see how clean that gets because you have all this light just washing through organically and not slamming into your model like a Mack truck? Impact, Gary, really? Come on, man, at least buy glow. <laughs> all right. All right, you guys have any other questions? I appreciate you uh, helping us out, figure out this live stream. If, you don't, if you're on my channel and don't know Daniel Norton, he just did his live demo, Daniel Norton Photographer. You guys can check out his channel. He just did a really clean three-point lighting setup, uh, and I don't know what I just did. So <laughs> I, I don't even know anymore. Everybody clean? Everybody good? Um, you guys can join me on twitch.tv slash lastxwitness. Please join the Discord if you haven't already. If you're a member of my Twitch channel, please let someone in that chat know uh, your experience with it because I'd love to grow that community. You can find me on Instagram, lastxwitness, and I will be at WPPI in Las Vegas. If you're going to be there, I have two classes, and I'll be re reviewing portfolios, so you're welcome to come hang out. Look up my name, Seth Miranda, and if there's no other questions, I'll see you guys next time. Any other questions? We're good? All right, guys. Later. Thank you so much.